Chef SD is making a lobster roll deviled egg with a buttery panko crust. Who knew that SD had this in her? I never would have thought of that. Hello, SD. How are you? Do you need help getting these eggs into the ice bath? No, it's fine. You got it? I got it. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's going on with these breadcrumbs here? It's like a garnish for my lobster roll. I like that you use the panko because they're really nice and um, flaky. I really want to win this challenge because that means the next challenge, the next person will have a very good advantage. Chef Chris, how's it going over here? Beautiful. So tell me what elements of like two different dishes to make it a mashup do you have going on here? I'm doing an appetizer with an entree. Oh, great. OK, cool. So it's going to be kind of like a caprese meat to pistachio crusted fish. Yes. Oh, excellent. That sounds really cool. It's super important to get a menu board advantage, because either they can use a sabotage against me, or I can use one against them. I really want that menu board. Bring it to me. To put the lobster into the egg, I have to carefully cut it in half. So I took off the yolk. So the white is the cup, and I put the lobster into the egg, basically like a sandwich. It broke. I whipped one of my eggs, so I can't use the second one. But I'm lucky that I have two other really good eggs. So I have to do a smaller plate than I was planning. So I put in some lobster into one and put some lobster in the other. Smart. Yeah. But I have to get everything on the plate. Add my mango and caviar. I love caviar. I usually like expensive caviar. It's the, the best in the world. There's Esty with caviar. Of course she has caviar. It's one of her favorite things to eat, isn't it? Eggs, lobster, and caviar. Wow. One minute. First, I lay down the balsamic reduction. It looks perfect. I have to get all of this plated on time, or else I won't have anything to give to the judges. 30 seconds. So, last minute, I decided to add celery to my lobster filling. So, from the fridge, I go grab some celery leaves, and I put it onto my deviled egg to add flavor. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Step away from your dishes. I look down at my dish. Really good, looks sexy, colorful, very seasonal, and I'm feeling I got this. I'm worried that I didn't make enough, and that's a problem. I think this is more of an amuse. So I'm really worried. Okay, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. <laughs> Chef Esty, please explain your dish. This is my lobster roll double egg mashup with crispy buttery panko and caviar. Chef Esty, I like the uh, presentation of your dish. It looks like two deviled eggs, but I like the idea of the two classics. A lobster roll mashed up with a deviled egg. I think it's a very smart mashup. Thank you. Chef Esty, the presentation on this dish is very cute. I like that you took the extra time to put the celery heart pluches on top. It's a nice touch, I think. The panko looks nice and crispy, and I like the caviar. It's very pretty. I can't wait to try it. Thank you. Let's taste Chef Esty's dish. Too salty. The lemon will cut through that, though. I made really good eggs. I'm worried my dish would be a little too small for the judges. Chef Esty, you really nailed the mashup challenge. All the different flavors that you'd expect from both of those dishes came through. It was a very well done dish. Thank you. I will say that my only critique would be there's a lot of salt in it. I think that it was maybe the mixture itself of the lobster was just a touch over seasoned because you had the caviar on top. That was also very salty. Just a, a tiny bit less, and it would have been perfect. Chef Esty, I did enjoy your mashup. It definitely reminded me in certain bites, like when I was up in Maine eating a lobster roll. I went to Maine and had a lobster roll. Is that what inspired you? <laughs> So that was a very inspiring dish to have those lobster flavors from Maine with the celery and the buttery breadcrumbs. Thank you. But I thought your dish was a little small. It was more like an amuse. You only had two pieces of egg. If I paid for that in a restaurant, I would expect at least four halves of eggs for an appetizer portion. Thank you. Chef Chris, please explain your dish. I made a caprese salad with a pistachio encrusted sea bass and a balsamic glaze, also with Cabernet or Blanc. And Chef, what two dishes did you mash up? I took one of my entrees and I mashed it up with an appetizer. Chef Chris, you have a, a lot going on on this plate. I'm curious to see how it all comes together. It does look like an entree, not an appetizer. It looks like a composed entree that I would get in a restaurant. Ooh. Mike, Alia, let's try Chef Chris's dish. So the judges are eating my dish. 
I don't think they were expecting something like that. At this point, I'm worried. Chef Chris, I really appreciated the ambition that you had in making your dish today. You know, you really showed us what you're made of as a chef, bringing out all these different techniques. It's a very pretty plate. Unfortunately, I don't think it all came through. I didn't really understand what the mashup was. This is just kind of like an entree that has a lot going on. Being an executive chef in a high caliber restaurant, I think I try to outdo myself. Chef Chris, when I looked at your plate, it reminded me of spring. It was nice and colorful with the basil and the tomatoes and the mozzarella and the balsamic. Definitely brought some of my Italian roots back, but I didn't think technically it was a mashup. And also, too, there's a lot of sweetness with the fish and then the mozzarella. It didn't all fully make sense to me, but overall, it was a pretty dish. Thank you. Well, chefs, you both presented your mashups. Now we have a decision to make, so please give us a moment. Even though Chris's dish is not a mashup, it looks really yummy. I'm not quite worried that it's gonna be yummy enough that it wins, so I'm staying pretty confident. I think I'm gonna win. Even though my dish really wasn't mashup, I still think I can win with the presentation, flavor profiles, and just overall, my culinary swag. Well, Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu for the next run? So at the end of the day, we've decided the advantage goes to... <laughs> Chef Esty. Yes! All right, chefs, you have 15 minutes left. You are halfway through the round. <laughs> Chef Isaiah, are you just making yourself a peanut butter and jelly? What's going on? Yeah, I'm making me a peanut butter soup. And then uh, you're gonna puree all this with peanut butter so it's gonna be kind of a smooth soup? Yeah, I need the peanut butter to give it a nice romantic look. A romantic look? The peanut butter is creamy and smooth just like me. So now, is the tree made the honor roll? Yeah. It's very cool to be on honor roll. My favorite subject is science. We get to learn about electricity, the world, and the human body, which is uncomfortable. Chef Isaiah, I smell something going on in the oven. What's going on there? <gasps> that is my burnt coconut flakes. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Coconut flakes are supposed to add a crunch and a little sweetness, but it'll taste like a burntness. I'm gonna do another batch. All right, looks like you got a uh, coconut drama going on here, so I'm gonna leave you be. Good luck. Thanks, Adam. All right. Thanks, Adam. Not super roasty. If I roasted them too much, they may get a little bitter. Chef Jill is in a real house right now. She's gonna be really hard to beat. All right, Chef, how's it going? Going okay, I think. We've got cashews in the actual pancake, and then uh, I made a chutney that has pistachios and apricots in it. Now, how is the rice flour gonna affect the texture of the pancake? It's gonna make it crispy. Okay. So it's like almost like a chip, like a play on chips and salsa, if you think about it. I make West African peanut soup all the time. It's a great soup, but what I'm making is better. Awesome. I know right now I've got this. Time is running out. I have to start plating. When I pour my soup in the bowl, the consistency isn't good. It's too thick. Oh, no! That is the worst thing that could ever happen. I don't want it to be too sticky on your teeth with the peanut butter or too thick, because then it's hard to eat. It's supposed to be nice and silky. Isaiah looks frazzling. That's not good. I don't have enough time to fix it. I am running out of time. I need to start plating. Let's go, Isaiah! The plating has to be perfect. So for my garnishes, I add cilantro, peanuts, coconut flakes, and lime wedges for size. Five, four, three, Two, one, time's up! Yeah. Yeah. There's the pancake, which has got some richness to it from the nuts, with the chutney, which has got more of a sweet and sour balance to it. I'm super happy with it. Okay, chefs, please bring your plates up to the judges. I think I really showcased the peanuts. My soup tastes really good, even though it's thick. It's the perfect amount of spice. They both look very beautiful. Chef Isaiah, please explain your dish. I prepared for you the West African peanut soup. Yours looks very nice, Isaiah. It's awesome. Chef Isaiah, your dish was great and creative. 
I really like the way you encaptured the nuts today. Every single bite that I had, I had a nice nut flavor. My issues with this soup is it's, it's, it's too thick. I don't want to eat a jar of peanut butter. I want to have a nice, brothy puree. You know, it's about developing flavors. You want to cook your onions and your vegetables and slowly keep building your building your flavors. This kind of seems like you put everything in, brought it up to a boil, and pureed it. I don't want you thinking so linear. I want you to think about the big picture. OK. Chef Isaiah, I really enjoyed the boldness of your dish today. It was really tasty. I liked the way that you made the peanut the forefront of the dish. The crispy coconut flakes as texture on top really worked for me. I also really appreciate the fact that you brought a heat level to the dish. It was really nice with the lime and cilantro also to make it nice and colorful, and it really came together for me. Thank you. My problem with this dish, I thought it was just a touch too thick, and the various elements felt a bit disjointed. I tasted everything kind of separately, whereas I wanted all the flavors to come together in one bite. Even though I didn't have the greatest texture, I'm still creative and I'm still bold. Chef Jill, please explain your dish. I have prepared for you today a rice and cashew pancake with apricot and pistachio chutney and a little bit of fresh yogurt and cilantro garnish. This is when the butterflies really kick in. It's nerve wracking watching someone eat your food. Chef Jill, I really loved your dish today. I thought it was a great way to use nuts. The pancake itself, I was really pleasantly surprised with. I wasn't kind of sure how the texture was going to be, but it was absolutely wonderful. The kind of crispy outside, and then the nice chewy center was perfect in my eyes. All the elements balance each other really well. You kind of have the creaminess from the yogurt, the nice crispiness and chewiness from the pancake. Though I loved the flavors in the chutney, the last thing I got was a lot of raw shallots and I wish that that was hooked out a little bit more. Otherwise, I thought everything made sense together. Chef Jill, I really loved your dish today. It was a very well-composed dish. Uh, you had a beautiful pancake, nice texture. The chutney had some nice acidity. It was almost like a sweet and sour. When it came to the nuts themselves, the nuts were inconsistent. I got one good bite of cashews, and the next bite, I didn't taste any at all. And after all, it is a nut challenge. So overall, I would just say, you just kind of focus on making everything a little bit more even keeled throughout. Thank you, thank you. It would be an upsetting loss if I lost because one bite didn't have the same amount of cashews as the other. Well, chefs, you gave us two great appetizers. This is going to be a tough nut to crack. Please give us a moment. I feel that my critique went more positively than Isaiah's critique. They both agreed my dish had a lot of really good elements. I showcased the nuts better than Chef Jill. I think I could win with this dish. Mike, Alia, who's the winner of round one? The winner is... Please like it, judges. Please. Chef Jill. Chef Jill, this was executed very well, and the flavors were nicely developed. Thank you. It is really relieving to win round one. It gives me more confidence, I think. This time, the heart of the warrior didn't win. I'm bummed out that the next prodigy has to go with a disadvantage. Talk to me about how, how this pork loin is prepared here. So right now I'm just getting a nice sear on it, and I'm going to throw it in the oven so it can finish. Sounds like you're going kind of Caribbean here. I love Caribbean food, and I wanted I haven't gotten a chance to make something Caribbean yet. Beautiful. Now you have about 12 minutes left. Are you feeling OK with time? I think if I just rush, I'll be OK. All right, Tip Emily, I'm going to leave you to it. Thank Good you. Good luck. Chef Larry. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm well, sir. How are you doing? Welcome to the first round of your challenge. <laughs> Thank you. Now, these are the eggs that you just kind of did. Were you looking for a soft boil? I'm hoping or for the soft poach. I'm hoping for the gooey, the oozing. Uh, How'd they come out, Chef? Hard boil. Temp's too high. About 20 degrees too high. Yeah. I actually made a perfect hard boiled egg, but not what I wanted. I need to fix it. Backup plan, I'll just fry it. Nothing wrong with a fried egg in these days. Nothing like a beautiful wrong. fried Nothing. quail egg looks very pretty. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Eight sir. minutes left, guys. Eight minutes. For my plantain chip, I cut open a plantain and I slice it in about one inch circles. I put them in the fryer until they're nice and golden brown. I mash them to make them nice and flat and into a big chip. And then I fry them once more to make it a tostone, because tostones are fried twice. Tostone is a great one bite. Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're crispy, they're salty. I love tostones. I love the perfect tostones. I'll make you perfect tostones. Five minutes. Five minutes remain. Emily, come on, pick up the pace. I should have put in the pork earlier so that it had more time to rest, but now I have to get this plated. Is it cooked? It's kind of undercooked on the top. 
but there's nothing I can do. With about two minutes left, we should start to think about plating. The crunch from the potato. I got the creme fraiche to kind of cool everything down a little bit. I got the pickled acidity of the bacon. This is sea urchin. The little uni is going to give that creamy salt, the nice quail egg. And instead of doing a sea salt for texture, use that little bit of caviar. It's going to give you that little salty pop. They look like fancy, very small baby high heels. I find one perfect piece. The rest is undercooked. I think we're going to get raw pork today. I have to plate two of these dishes. So I keep cutting into the pork, trying to find a nice piece. I can't, I can't cut that. It's not cutable. And that is officially 60 seconds left. One minute remain in the first round. I find one overcooked piece of the tenderloin. So I cut the pork in half lengthwise, and I plate it on top of the tostone. It does not look good, but there's nothing else that I can use. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We got perfect. Nothing I can do now. I am so worried. This is going to screw me up so badly. Nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Time's up. Step away from the dishes. OK, chef, please bring your plates up to the judges. Chef Emily, what have you prepared for us today? Today, I have prepared a jerk pork tenderloin with mango salsa on top of a tostone. Very colorful dish. The only thing I'm wondering is, why is one a round piece of loin and one a half piece of loin? One piece was a little bit undercooked, so I had to cut off the undercooked part and give you, like, the good part. But it'll taste just as good. But it'll taste just as good. Thank you, Chef. So who gets a smaller bite? <laughs> <laughs> Even though my pork is a little bit undercooked, I really am hoping that the judges will see past the flaws in my dish. I'm watching the judges eat, and I'm getting nervous at this point. Chef Emily, your tostones were perfect. There was a nice uh, kind of starchy creaminess in the center, and then that really like crispy, crunchy outside. It added a really wonderful texture, and a really, um, it made the dish really easy to eat. I would have liked it if there's a little bit less tostone and a little bit more pork. But all in all, the flavors were really there, and it was a nice uh, palate opener. Chef Emily, you didn't cook the pork correctly. You put it in a pan that was a low temperature, you put it in the oven, you pulled it out too soon, and you, cut, and you slice it too soon. Well, what that means is it wasn't cooked correctly. Overall, the creativity on the dish was, was very creative, very colorful, very fun. It was a beautiful one-biter. Mike and Alia dinged me for the uneven proportions. However, they said my presentation was nice, so this is anyone's game. Chef Larry, what have you prepared for us today? I made a little pickled bacon with a fried fingerling, a sea urchin, quail egg, and a little tobacco. Okay, this is a very beautiful presentation. I can see all the different layers of flavor you have going on. It looks very tasty, and I can't wait to dig in. I'm looking for reaction, and they're good. There's no reaction. I gave a good first bite. I really like the breakfast approach that you have on this dish, the egg, the bacon, the potatoes. One thing that I was expecting is when you were pickling the bacon, I was expecting this really acidic, kind of aggressive flavor. I actually didn't get any of that. It was a little bit uh, mild, in my opinion. It's a very good breakfast execution. I just wish there was a little bit more acid or something kind of, or, or heat to kind of like add a little bit more uh, pop. Chef Larry, I loved how you combined three different types of eggs into your one bite to bring different flavors. And I like the potato chip with it. I, I wish the potato chip was bigger because with the sea urchin, the yolk of the quail and the eggs was really rich, so it kind of overtook it. Instead of serving it on a spoon, I would have had a bigger chip, so it would I would have had a little bit more crunch, a little bit more potato flavor to help even everything out. Food's kind of crazy, and it's very subjective. I'm not taking anything away from Emily's dish, but you know, I might, I might have this one. Overall, these were two great amusés. Now we have a decision to make, so give us a moment. I definitely think that I still have a chance of winning, but who knows? I really want the judges to like my dish, because there is an advantage going into the second round if I win the first round. And as a chef, I want another chef to like my dish. Mike, Alia, who gets to pick an advantage from the menu for the next round? We've decided the advantage goes to... Chef Larry. Nice shot. If 
feels really bad having to have somebody go on with a disadvantage because I got beaten. It's kind of embarrassing. Congratulations, Chef Larry. This means that you enter into round two with control of the menu board. You know, on the inside, I'm, I'm you know, oh, oh, stop, hammer time. Great, I got this advantage, but I still have to be humble about it. 